In this video, we're going to talk about the axioms of probability. These are three crucial axioms that make up all the theoretical work and theorems that we have in probability. So here we go. Let S be the sample space and AI, AJ be events in S, so there can be an infinite amount of them. Uh, there's three axioms. One is that the probability of any event happening is going to be equal to or greater than zero meaning we can't have a negative probability, which makes sense because you can't say there's a negative 15% chance of something happening. You just say there's a 0% chance if it's not possible. The second axiom is that the probability of the sample space happening is going to be one, which correlates to being 100% chance that if something happens, it's in the realm of all possibilities. So if you flip a coin, you can't have a seven show up. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, the third one is a little bit more complicated. I'm gonna show you the general form that would be taught in a statistics course and then break it down. So what this says is that if the intersection of all events is equal to the empty set, then the union of the probability of all the events is just equal to a1 plus a2 plus dot 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 forever and these should actually be more specifically the probability of a1 plus the probability of a2 plus dot 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 so more specifically if we take events a and b if A intersection B is equal to the empty set, then we can say that the probability of A union B is just equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. This is what you normally see in a discrete math textbook. The upper one is what you would see in an introduction to probabil probability and statistics book. Both are the same thing. The top one is just more general. So there's more sets. So I'll draw you the intuition for this third picture. Um, we have A and B. They're disjoint, so there's no overlap. So this is A, this is B. Therefore, if we want A or B, there's just the probability of A plus the probability of B. There's no overlap, so we don't have to subtract anything. Okay, that's good. So those are the three axioms. And now using these, we're going to prove the complement rule that the probability of A bar is equal to one minus the probability of A. This can be tricky, so I'm gonna go through this step by step. First of all, we want a sample space. So we have the sample space, and if we have one event A, then we can say, okay, this is A, and then we have A bar on the outside. And this whole thing is the sample space, so we know that the sample space is equal to A union A bar. Okay, so that is one bit of information we have. We also have another bit of information, is that when we take A intersection A bar, we get the empty set, since there is no intersection there. So, by axiom 3, we know that because A intersection A bar is the empty set, that the probability of A or A bar is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of A bar. Okay, so that's not bad. And now, from this, the probability of A or A bar is actually equal to the probability of the sample space. So, if we basically, if we put the probabilities around here, this gets to the same point. So it's not like we introduced this out of nowhere, it's that we just took two sets and said, okay, instead of taking just the set, we'll make the probability of the set. And we need this because we have another axiom we can use. So I'm gonna write this full thing out. The probability of S is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of A bar. Now what do we know? 
Well, axiom two says that the probability of the sample space is always equal to one. So one is equal to P of A plus P of A bar. So now, using simple algebra, we can claim that the probability of A bar is equal to one minus the probability of A. And thus we have concluded the proof that the probability of A bar is one minus the probability of A. And we did that using our axioms here. So the first axiom doesn't really come into place that much, but it sort of does when you think about it because we have to verify that one minus this doesn't make this negative because that would be a little bit weird. But because axiom one is true, we know that this sort of makes sense. In fact, it makes sense completely. So that is one way you can prove things with the axioms. A lot of other proofs are far more difficult, so we're just not going to do them. And if you were asked them on a quiz or a test or something, you would probably have been shown in class a more complicated proof. Anyways, let's talk about some important rules here. One is the additive rule. And what it says here is that the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A intersection B bar plus the probability of B. So let's take a look at this. We know that A or B is equal to this whole thing here. So let's break this down into chunks. What does A intersection not B look like? Well, A intersection not B is all of this area here. And it doesn't include the part in the middle because that is where B is. Now the probability of B, well, that's just this whole area here. So we see that A or B is equal to A intersection B bar plus B. So we just put probability around it and it's consistent. So that's the additive rule. Now we have one more rule here. In fact, we have two more rules. And this is the basis of the inclusion exclusion principle. So I'm not gonna generalize it in this video, but we are gonna discuss it. So A or B, well, if these sets were disjoint, it would just be A plus B. So let's take a look at this. Um, I'm going to pick an element in A or B, and I'm gonna pick it very specifically. I'm gonna pick X here in the intersection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take A. So if I pick A and I say, okay, the probability of A or B is A. Okay, it's the probability of A. And then I'm going to do the probability of B. So we'll do that there. I'm gonna add those two. Now the problem is I counted X twice here. I counted X when I took the probability of A and then I counted X again when I took the probability of B. So what we have to do is we have to subtract this area in the middle that we counted twice. So we have to subtract the probability of A intersection B. So again, the argument is if we erase all this and go through the argument once more, if I take any X in here, then I take the probability of A. So I'm counting this whole area once, and then I take the probability of B, and then I'm counting it all over again. So I have to subtract this once, so that way I'm only adding everything up once. All right, that is the case when there's A or B. Now, A or B or C is the same concept. So let's pick the probability of A as our first one. So we have this section right here. Then let's do the probability of B. So that's gonna be this section. And then we're gonna add the probability of C, which is going to be the bottom section here. So let's take a look at what's been counted twice. Well, we have this area being counted twice in light blue. We have this area being counted twice, and we have this area being that was counted twice. So we have to subtract A intersection B. We have to subtract 
A intersection C, and we have to subtract B intersection C. The problem is, is that we've subtracted this middle component three times. But we still need to count it once. So it was counted once with A, counted once with B, and counted once with C, but then we subtracted it three times. So this area in the middle here isn't even being counted right now. So what we do is we add it back. So we add in A intersection B intersection C. And this is the result. Now, what's interesting about this, and to show it's consistent with the first set of axioms here, is that if we take these sets as disjoint, and we say, okay, here's A, B, and C. So the probability should just be A plus B plus C. Okay, well, let's take a look. Uh, we have PA, we have PB, we have PC, but this A intersection B is going to be empty, A intersection C will be empty, B intersection C will be empty, and A intersection B intersection C will be empty. So the formula still holds. So that's good. Anyways, we can extend this to A or B or C or D, and we can keep going. That will be covered when we get to inclusion, exclusion. And I can't draw Venn diagrams for the four case because it's very difficult to do in two-dimensional space. So that will be just as a general case, a theoretical case, and I won't prove it to you with Venn diagrams when we get to inclusion, exclusion. Anyways, we did some rules, so let's do some probability finding. So the probability of A is 0.4, the probability of B is 0.3, and the probability of A intersection B is 0.2. Let's find some other probabilities. So we know that A bar is just 1 minus the probability of A, so that's going to be 1 minus 0.4 which is going to be 0 0.6. Okay, B bar is going to be 1 minus the probability of B, which is going to be 0 0.7. Okay, A or B, well, by inclusion-exclusion, we know this is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B. So this is going to be 0.4 plus 0.3 minus 0.2, which will give us 0 0.5. Okay, I'm just going to put this above so we know what the numbers are, because we're losing them. So, let's like that. Okay, the probability of A union B bar. So, what this is, is we could calculate, you know, PA bar plus PB bar minus PA intersection B bar, but it's really just 1 minus the probability of A or B, and that's much faster, because we know that's just 1 minus 0 0.5, which is 0 0.5. Okay, that's not bad. Now we get to a couple of the trickier ones. Like, what is A intersection B bar? Well, what we're looking for here is if this is A and this is B, then we're looking for this area right here. But we actually know a formula for this. If you remember, A union B is just A intersection B bar plus the probability of B. So when we do some algebra here, we know this is just 1, or not 1 minus, this is just the probability of A union B minus the probability of B, which is going to be 0.5 minus 0.3, which just leaves us with 0 0.2. That's not too bad. We can do the same thing with A bar intersection B. So this is going to be the probability of A union B, but now we subtract the probability of A. So this will be 0.5 minus 0.4, so that's 0.4 right there, that's 0.5, and this will give us 0.1. All right, and we have two more here, so now we need to find A or B bar. 
Well, this is a little bit easier now because we know that A or B is just the probability of A plus the probability of B bar minus the probability of A intersection B bar. And now we know these numbers. So, okay, A is 0.4, B bar is going to be 0.7, we figured that out earlier. And now we subtract A intersection B bar, which is 0.2. So that's 1.1 minus 0.2, and that's going to be 0 0.9. There is another way we can do this, which involves set theory laws. So we know that A union B bar is the same as 1 minus the probability of A union B bar bar. Okay. Using De Morgan's, this is the same as 1 minus the probability of A bar intersection B. So this is the same as 1 minus, okay, what's A intersection B? That's uh, 0.1 right here. So that's the same thing as 1 minus 0.1, which is equal to 0.9. So we can verify it both ways. Now, Oops, we want the last one here, which is A bar union B. And we know this is just the probability of A bar plus the probability of B minus the probability of A bar intersection B. So this is just 0 0.6 plus 0 0.3 minus 0 0.1, which is just 0.8. So there, you can apply the same set theory laws as before, but doing it this way works just as well. So that is some axioms of probability. You can do things with these that are both direct calculation, that are proofs. There's a lot you can do with these, and these are fundamental for understanding why probability works and why we use these assumptions. Like, why do we use 1 instead of 100? Well, it just comes from the axioms. And we calculate decimals and percents instead. It's just an axiomatic convention. So, if you enjoyed this video, you can check it out as well as more at trevtutor.com. We have practice finals solutions for not this one yet, but by the time you check it out, it might be up there. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and share. That would be great. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments below, and I will get to them as quickly as I possibly can.